If you're considering staying at the Hard Rock Hotel in Hollywood, Florida, in this video, I'm sharing with you 11 helpful things to know before you book this spot. And is it worth it? Coming up. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is Seattle, and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. This is my uh, half a dozen-ish time staying on this property, and I have tons of helpful tips to help you plan your trip if you take it. So let's dive straight in. Number 10 is the room. The thing to know is that there's a lot of seasonality here. So while you can expect to pay off season rates as low as $250 a night, generally speaking, you're going to be looking at something in the $400 to $600 per night and up depending on the season, the time of year, the was it a weekend, are there events going on, etc. So it's not an inexpensive price to stay here. But it's also helpful to know that the price will vary depending on where you stay in the hotel. So there are three towers here. There's the Oasis Tower, there's the Hard Rock Tower, and then there's where I'm at right now, which is the actual guitar. I've stayed in each of the three towers, so let's take a quick look of what it looks like on the Hard Rock side. <laughs> And when I came here a few weeks ago, I stayed on the Oasis Tower, so that's what this looks like. Right now we're staying in the Guitar Tower, which I'm super excited about because to stay in this tower, it's a premium versus the other Hard Rock versus the Oasis Tower. And one of the things I was genuinely curious about is while you're in the room, will you be able to see the lights? Right now the entire guitar is lit up, not just because uh, there's no show going on, it's just nighttime and there's uh, the lights going on, but I literally wouldn't even know that I'm in the guitar tower right now because you don't see any lights at all. Maybe just my GoPro light. <laughs> but actually one helpful thing to know is that on the guitar tower, there's obviously two sides, well I guess four sides of it depending on which side you're staying on. But you definitely want to be on the side that has the view of the pool. Because otherwise, I was thinking about this while we were driving in, you're otherwise looking at the parking lot. That's not totally desirable. But anyway, you do not see the lights when you are staying in the room. So you got to go out to enjoy the lights. And one thing that I'll totally admit is that this room really doesn't look any different than the other towers. It just happens to be in the guitar. But when you are in the room, you can't tell you're in the guitar. So paying a premium, I don't know, maybe. Maybe if you have a view of the pool, which is really nice, but something to consider. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button, consider subscribing. Tell me in the comments below where else you're considering staying. And don't forget, there's a full blog post that goes along with this. So check the description for that and let's dive in with the next thing to know. Number nine is the light show. Part of what makes this property kind of special is that, is the guitar, right? It's a really unique thing to see. And one of the things you don't wanna miss while you're here is seeing it lit up to music. They do these really fun light shows, but it's really helpful to know because it doesn't actually happen all day long. It only happens a couple times a day or even once a day, depending on when you're here. When I first started traveling here, they used to have three shows a night, but now they're only have, having one at 7 p.m. So make sure you check the website for info on that. But it's short, it's only 10 to 15 minutes. And the best way to view it is exactly where I'm at right now, which is the back of the pool. Don't miss the light show, head to the back of the pool for that short, short show and enjoy the lights. Here's a bonus one, maybe this is number eight and a half, but don't miss the show that goes along with the fountain that happens between the two towers. So in other words, inside you'll find the really, really beautiful fountain. And it's a spot that a lot of people like to come to to take photos at, but it's also a great spot to just sit down and enjoy the fountain show. So let's talk about this next section, which is about things to do on the property. Starting with number eight, which is the pool. Let's talk about it. We just spent the entire afternoon at the pool and it's 
awesome. It's one of the best things about this property. There's more than one pool, but while we're here on this day, only the pool on the Oasis Tower is open, so the actual Hard Rock pool is closed. But it was still such a vibe. It's somewhere I've been a few times now. But at this pool, you can expect uh, really great music, obviously, it's the Hard Rock, and just a really great environment. We, uh, we were there for a long time, so not only did we eat, but we also drank, and uh, it's the Hard Rock. I mean, prices are not inexpensive here, but they are not more than I expected. So uh, if you want to do the math and make the choice on yourself, if this is something for you, this is what our receipt looked like for an afternoon of drinking. And service was awesome. So gratuity is already automatically included. Um, and we had a really nice server who was looking out for us all day long, and she did a great job. A couple helpful things to know. One is the pool hours are not as long as I expected. So we were there today from like noon to 4 p.m., but the pool actually closes at 6 p.m. So that's one thing to know if you're planning on uh, considering a night swim that is not available to you. So note the pool hours. And the other thing is uh, you gotta wear these wristbands. So they actually make you check in. I'm not surprised. They, are preventing people from just coming in because the pool experience really is very nice. Um, but you can grab a wristband as you're checking in um, and going to your spot. Oh, another helpful thing to know is that they have pool parties. So make sure you check out the calendar for their day club events that they have. It's something that's been on my radar. Granted, it is more house electronic music and not hip hop, which is what I like. But they do have that available, so make sure you check out the event calendar. Number seven is about eating. <laughs> there are so many restaurants on the property from the very expensive to the relatively inexpensive restaurants. And it's helpful to know that you cannot smoke at the restaurants, but let's dive in with a few of my favorites. My first favorite is Council Oak. This spot is awesome, especially if you're looking for like a fancy steak dinner, it will deliver on that. Uh, I was there last night actually, and I was just having drinks at the bar because they oftentimes have live music here with really fantastic talent. But the dinners that I have had at this spot are very, very good. And I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something that's a little bit nicer for dinner. On the opposite side, something a little bit more casual is Bowl, the Asian spots. I had it for lunch yesterday. So let's flip back and talk about that. Welcome to Bowl, the Asian spot that's super casual. And today I got the beef pho. Meatball ordered some of the dumplings as well as the General Tso's chicken. Service here is so nice. I'm really excited to dig into this. And the spot that I will probably be at later tonight, or late tonight rather, because it's 24 seven is Rise. This is the spot that's kind of like, uh, you know, like your American diner type of spot, a little bit more upscale than that. So if you're looking to have some eggs at 3 a.m. with some french fries, this is your spot to go to at Rise because it's 24 seven. The spot that I'm at every morning is Constant Grind. This is your coffee shop, but they don't have just coffee. They have really beautiful patients streets and they also have ice cream and they also have a ton of snacks that you can take away. So this is your spot for coffee, but constant grind in the morning. Ooh, and here's a helpful tip. Yes, they do have some really nice seating areas within constant grind, but I actually recommend grabbing your cup of joe and coming into the hallway because it's actually really pretty. Um, and we'll talk about this as the last one, but there's some just really nice things to look at while you're sitting in the hallway. Cocktails to go. Yes. I should get a cocktail to go. Number six is the bar. Let's get to drinking. If you love to drink as much as I do, you're gonna love the bars here, but you're not really going to love the prices, but who expects to drink for cheap at the Hard Rock, right? You can basically expect to pay around 17 to 20. Actually, there are some really fantastic wines. They had the Opus 1 2018, at I think 229 a glass last night at Council Oak. Anyway, basically expect to pay $17 and up for cocktails, $15 and way up for wine, uh, but you'll find some really fantastic spaces with some really great vibes. 
So here's a couple of my favorites. One is L Bar. I love L Bar. It's a little bit more secluded um, and there are some nice seating areas with high back seats. But if you're looking for something to be like in the crowd with everyone, go to the middle of the casino floor where you'll find a center bar. And that's in the mix with everything. Number five is the entertainment. There's tons of shows happening all the time, so make sure you look at the calendar to time it accordingly. Obviously, if you come when a big show is coming through, the rates for rooms, etc., are gonna be significantly more, so that's just something to note, and that's expected, right? But another thing to know is that if you're not here for the shows and you really just wanna enjoy the pool and enjoy the property, then consider coming midweek. There's not gonna be any shows. You will find some live entertainment like I did at Council Oak, but you can also get more inexpensive prices for the room. So that's just something to consider. And also don't come here midweek expecting the clubs to be open. So if you're looking to go today or to the day club or the night club at Entice, come during the weekend. And uh, if you've been before, tell me in the comments below. Um, I would genuinely love your tips. I'm making the assumption that these spots don't play hip hop and I don't like to go to a nightclub unless there's hip hop. Well, maybe I would consider it. Anyway, it's why I flew to a guaranteed spot that would have hip hop in downtown San Diego. So join me in that video if you wanna to go to the other coast. But let's dive in with the next one, which is number four, other things to do in the area. If you're wondering what there is to do in the area, there's a couple things. First, Las Olas, such a fun downtown area to go out for restaurants, for nightlife, for bars, and for so many more things. That's a really great option. The second thing nearby is the Hollywood Boardwalk. That's also a really cool spot to go enjoy some views at the beach, spend time at the beach, and eat some of the restaurants and bars over there. And tonight, we're doing something I'm really excited about, which is going to to the Florida Live Arena, and tonight the Panthers are playing, but they have all kinds of events there, so check the info in the description below to get the full calendar of the events going on. But if I'm honest, and you know I like to keep it 100, is that this hotel isn't located, like right next to a million things. And so it's important to know that like you, you can't just go walk somewhere, you gotta get in your car or grab an Uber and drive somewhere to do something off-site. There's also entertainment in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> We've been drinking. <laughs> Number three is about shopping. Let's talk about that. If you're into shopping, there's definitely a lot of options of shops for you to go check out and I don't know whether you actually buy something or just check it out to see what kind of chotskis they have. I got it for you. Number two is a helpful one to know, which is about parking. So let's talk about that. Helpful to know is that the parking is free. It's probably the only thing that's free in this entire property. <laughs> the parking is free and depending on which part of the Hard Rock you're going to, depends on which garage you should go to also. So if you're in the Oasis Tower, you need to be in the Lucky Street garage. But if you're in the Hard Rock side, then you should be in the Hard Rock Garage. Obviously they have valet also, but if you want free parking, then come over to one of these garages. The number one thing to know about the Hard Rock, and this might sound silly to you, but I actually think it's really important because you are constantly looking at this and you're constantly enjoying it, which is all of the displays. And I don't know if you know this, but between all of the Hard Rocks around the world, they have been collecting all of these pieces over the last 45 years. And can you guess how many of them there are worldwide? It's over 86,000. And so one of the pieces that I really love that's here is the Madonna Like a Virgin wedding dress, but there's just so many cool things to look at. And now that you know what you're looking at, you can enjoy it a little bit more while you're here. So is it worth coming here? Yes, let's be honest. It's the reason why I keep coming back. But there are things to consider about which tower you stay in and is it worth how much you'll pay to stay in that tower? And also which time of the year and which day of the week are you gonna come based off what you want to do? So those are some things to consider. If you have a helpful tip, add it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.